Warning, the following podcast contains strong language and themes of an adult nature, including offensive words, lewdness, risque situations, implied nudity, sexual content, poor behavior, depravity, innuendo, lecherous thoughts, naughty actions, anachronisms, indelicate expressions, feats of lyrical sublimity, suggestive imagery, obscenity, eroticism, farce, mischief, romance, high art, tomfoolery, feminism, early modern English, sex positivity, irony, comedy, drama, and satire. It is not suitable for children or the faint of heart. Enjoy. The Banging of the Shrew High Shakespearean Smut for the Lowly Stage Presented to you in five acts of tongue and Previously on The Banging of the Shrew, Peter has agreed to leave the brothel and never return. Meanwhile, the young lovers have hatched a plan to run away together with the aid of the midwife and the doctor. Act 5, Scene 1, The Morning After. Well, Uncle, dressed so, do I seem the part to bluff the madam as a wealthy merchant? My boy, thy vital glow and animation has none the gray of one so old as Horace. I've remedied to hide my looks. False whiskers. <laughs> I think twill have to do. Remember, stoop thy back, be sure to ache and groan, put pipes and whistles in thy sound, then squint thine eyes to see and mock that thou art hard of hearing. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> Am I the ancient now, here to collect my courtesan? What? Eh? Oh, God help our schemes. Now... Once thou hast taken Bianca from this house, go straight to the chapel to wed, and I shall return and reveal the truth of thy elopement to Madame Baptista, and shall assuage what anger she may have, thy means, well-being, and future assured. Oh, thank you. With Bianca as my bride, this day's the starting of my happy life. (laughs) Zounds, master. Must we leave soon? I've not yet got my pig plugged up that plump rump of Maria's. (laughs) Oh, pity. She's nearly high. Jesu, thy half-rot twig would likely snap off in her twat. If thou didst try it there, you beast. Get to. We shall depart anon. Good morning. Whither go ye, gentlemen? I'm Luke, sir. Have I not a good disguise? If for to blot thy wit in nonsense, I... What's this, friend? Tis our plan to win Bianca. By feigning as Signore Horns come to claim her, I will fetch true love instead. More foolish things have chanced in name of love of late. So go to what thou may, young pup. Here. This old coat might better aid thy suit. Wear it. In luck of love. Uh, uh, Gramercy, sir. Uh, Hush! uh, The madam and Mistress Kate approach. Has all been readied? (coughs) Oh, that will have to do. Oh, Rot. Good gentlemen, what business can be done with you today? Lo, oh, it is I, madame, Signore Horace, wealthy merchant. Signore, you seem different today. Are you well? Uh... A slight cough, madame. Tis why he seemeth not himself. <coughs> well, have you chosen which girl you wish employed as your companion? I have. Upon the expert work and praise of the good doctor, as well as your midwife, I, in my true estimations, too, I won't deny the forceful yearnings of mine heart. I choose Bianca, whose beauty and heart shall be the purest I shall ever know. (laughs) What a witless choice. That artless girl is better suited for the kitchen chores, or worse still, for marriage. I, the man what takes her maidenhead, is like to turn a maiden quickly to a wife instead. I I pick no other girl but fair Bianca. (sighs) So be it then. As you have paid in full to make your choice, we'll see what can be done. Helen, go fetch Bianca. Aye. Bianca! (sighs) Ere I depart, madam... I wish to give thee thanks for the fine hospitality of your respected house. Merci beaucoup. And I thank thee. Thy patronage was welcome. 
and I hope thou hast found our reputation well proved despite ill tempers come and gone. Assuredly, I was most satisfied in all my stay. In all my travels hence, I'll say in truth, the good name of this house is most deserved. Good. Farewell, Mr. Pluck. And Mistress Kate? Farewell. Most rare hath been the experience of your company. Indeed. It was... unique. Farewell. And you are sure you wish for my departure? Yes. Then very well. If your good grace is close to me, my lust shall move me to move on. Grayson, make haste. Let's go. Mm. Let's stand aside a spell and see what mischief's to it. No. Hurry, girl. Here she is, ready as rosebuds. Senor, how pleased I am to see you here. My dear, as I am pleased to see thy beauty again, I'd, as a pilgrimer at shrine, fall to my knees. If I were not so old. Um. I've news, Bianca. The Senor hath honored thee as selection for his courtesan. How sayest, girl? What can I say but that I shall obey thy will? Obey. Daft, girl, thou art not bound. Though this dull rake hath picked thee as his lech, tis still thy choice to pick him back by thy own will. I know this, mistress. It is my want to gladly do my duty. Worry not, Kate. Her will's to do her duty and all is well. Horence has paid his fee and Bianca has assented. Tis done. <laughs> I'm yours, my lord. Love, let's take our leave. <laughs> 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 Mm. Oh, this pot. All's to be undone for sure. Madame Baptista, I, to your firm will, have come to humbly proclaim mine intentions. What's this? Two Horances are in our midst? Good God, one Horence here was bad enough. One must be false. <coughs> Why, he is much too old and ugly to be me. What is this jape? The japes that Horence lacks a looking glass. Sir, thou art addled. Here, Signore Horence, come for Bianca as his courtesan. But I am he, and have no need of her. Madam, surely this man is counterfeit, a highwayman up to some kind of mischief. A highwayman? What is this galled affront? Then why dost thou have flowers in thy hand? They are for wooing. Mark then, thou canst not be Horence. If those flowers came from out of doors, then thou art not a goat, for goats would eat those flowers out of doors. Horence is said by all to be a goat, so that must mean thou art a highwayman. I've never been so scandalously slandered. I am a wealthy merchant, known by all respected circles as Signore Horence. Those pompous words could not come from the lips of any other ancient fool but he. Signore, tis you. I'll sort this mistake. Your keen, authoritative hand, I'm sure, shall mete out discipline to all in need or want of it. Uh, indeed, Signore Horence. You there, the other goat, explain thyself. If thou art but a sham, thou shalt be punished. Oh, that I were a sham this very moment. Madame, with whiskers false and guise removed, tis I changed into Luke and I confess the reasons for deception. I'm in love with fair Bianca, she with me, and we have schemed to run away to church together. Fie! Traitors to our house! Oh, foolish youth, so sightless. Bianca, for thine own good, prepare thyself to go with the Signora. I shall not take her now. Nonsense. You shall. Madam. No. Please, I beg you to consent that she may wed to me. I should allow a charge of mine to give herself to what can only be a life of poverty? I'll keep my apprenticeship and learn the trade of doctor, working hard to earn a modest living for a wife and children. Bianca, answer me. Is this thy choice? A life condemned a pauper wife without the luxury thou art entitled to? All that I'll need in life is love from Luke. Fie! Fie on proffered love! Fie all who give themselves away to it! Thy choice is bad. It shames thee and us all! Oh, let them love! I must defy your condemnation, Kate, for your insulted pride is justified. These two have won their field, if battles be of love. Mm -hmm. They've met their love, and now can't be denied of it. 
Tis better that they leave, for they're now pricked, spoiled, and enslaved by love. These two sweet youngsters, far from fully formed, must follow freely wants and wills, which love alone decrees. They'll have no other now. I almost envy them their foolish love, as I at times am lost, though free, adrift without a tie so fast as love's taut mooring. Madame Baptista, I'll ensure the boy attains his future, and will also pay all debts the girl may have with your good house, plus modest dowry, so that they may start their happy life together. See it as a parting gift to all, ere I depart. Oh. Oh. Perhaps tis better for the girl to go. This is a most surprising situation. What of our promise to Signore Horace? I do not want that girl as courtesan. I need a dominatrix, chiefly you. Oh, most impressive ruler of this house, I beg in supplication to thy will, command and masterful capacity as shrewd disciplinarian to let me grovel in your service. I so pledge myself to you, no matter what it costs. I see. Thou art a naughty goat in need of goatherd's cane. So be it. Stand behind me and stay quiet. Oh, yes, mistress. Yes. Bianca, thou art released from this house. Oh, thank you, madam. Thank you, mistress Kate. If that's thy wish, get thee to love, young fool. Come, children, let us to the chapel go. <laughs> Oh, happy days for I. <laughs> <laughs> Madam, may I... Be silent, worm. It's time I school thy conduct. Come. Oh, yes. Oh, my. <laughs> There'll be much profit worming that old goat. Ah, oh, my day's half gone. I best be to my work. Mm, shall we get on, my lord? Anon. Go ready my baggage. Ah. Aye, sir. Yes, sir. No, sir. I thank you for your aid in this strange matter. Your kindness is appreciated here. No thanks are necessary. I was glad to serve the needs of this respected house. What needed doing, done, and none denied. So... I suppose love does take precedent for some. Mary, perhaps tis so. Good mistress, now I shall take my leave of you. Farewell. Good travels to you, sir. Be well. If thou dost happen to return some day, thou wouldst not be entirely unwelcome, Peter. I thank thee, Kate. Again, farewell. Farewell. More, you ask? Don't fret. The banging of the shrew will return right after this. Like what you hear? Then rate and review us on your favorite podcast service. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Banging of the Shrew. And visit our website at bangingoftheshrew.com. And tell a friend about us, too. We now return to the Banging of the Shrew, a comedy of sex, love, and foul language Five acts. And finally, Act Five, Scene Two. Three months later, a feast. But first, a quick one with exposition. Oh, how 
about a quick one whilst we stand. <laughs> Get gone. Oh, come on. <laughs> My dong's been cleaned. Thou wouldst have caught the clap by now for all I diddle thee. <laughs> Thank God's the midwife. Well, be quick about it, for the company arrives for supper. Oh, <laughs> It will be a merry Twelfth Night Feast tonight. Oh, and good to have my little bird Bianca come back to visit. What a help she was around the house. It's not been three months since she ran off with that boy, and la, already she shows a bump. Knocked up. Oh, you'd think the house would be all gloom since she'd been gone. But life and life, and the madame's been in fine mood. What with that codger pantaloon to whip and master over. Alas thee, my cow. Oh, with what? That greasy string bean twits thy legs. I wouldn't even let thee through the door, save that thy master comes so often now, and keeps good company with Mistress Kate. Oh, by gobs. I swear her face lights up on eaves of his appearance. Strange as that may seem. Oh, hurry up, my grunts, and finish quick. I hear the party coming down the hall. and thy gross gray dog as well, go bid the serving men to bring the banquet. <laughs> My sweet dears, bucks and doe alike, come in, come in and let us feast in holiday. And let me too enjoy you as my guests, my friends, my family. <laughs> Pray, sit, and be merry. Happy are we to have thee as our host, that kindly welcomes us as daughters, sons, cousins, and what you will, most truly felt in gladness. Let's have wine and happy spirits. <laughs> <laughs> to Luke and dear Bianca, newly wed, Happy am I to have you home and wish you every happiness. <laughs> and six months hence, our happy wish shall come and make you happy, Godmother, too. Oh. <laughs> to the Signore, we apologize for our deceiving you, as did our happiness command us, but we wish you as much happiness in turn. If thou but knew what happiness that I have gained, what's granted by the Madam, ah, oh, rewarding me for service to her glory. Throng, close thy mouth. Uh, Bianca, say thy piece. For your instruction, guidance, and protection, Madame and Kate. Though I've now learned to be a doctor's wife with modest means, I'm grateful. As I am grateful for you all. In faith, for even thee, Peter. As I have learned, much tolerance since after thy arrival. Such honest words beseem me, Kate. To chaste young hearts, to aged perversion, and to love. <laughs> <laughs> How odd it seems these days that Kate and Peter now carry on like an old married pair. Which makes it certain he'll soon be the cuckold. Impossible, for there's no holy chains by which to bond and choke me. Tis more like that Luke will sooner be not only cuckold, but, as naive blossoms wilt, a rake as well. And dear old Horace hasn't horn enough to be the cuckold he doth pine to be. So thinkest thou art safe from cuckoldry? If yea or nay, no matter. Love is love. Surely thou canst not claim to know real love. More so than husbands can. <laughs> that cannot be. Let us wager. Which man here knows real Love. Surely my husband. Since I've taught my horrents the force of love, he'd win. What shall we wager? A thousand crowns. I've not a crown to bet, as Luke's not yet a doctor. Then we'll stake for honor, pride, and principle. Agreed? Content. A match. Helen can judge the contest. Pray, fetch the midwife to come here at once. Thou wilt not disappoint me, thrall. No, mistress. I'll win, my wife. My love for thee can't fail. 
What all then? We have a wager. I need thee to judge which man knows best real love. I, Mary, though expertise in cocks and cunts might be my forte, matters of more lofty art I can appraise the same. And therefore justly. Let us begin. If it would please my lord, pray speak to them of thy command of love. <laughs> Love is the most precious prize to possess, given to he who's most deserving it. A loving, gentle wife is such a prize. A happy husband, eh? Bianca, beest thou as filled up with wifely happiness? Uh, if I had... Yes, of course, for she loves me. I see. Lawrence, go to and speak of love. Yes, mistress. Love is the most glorious tyrant whose rule grants pleasure that cannot be questioned. It's felt most sharply when one hath submitted completely to its authorship. Oh, when Baptista takes her whip to me, I feel... No more, no more. <laughs> We're soon to lose our stomachs. Thou wilt be punished, goat. Oh, yes, I must. <laughs> Fie. Fie, this talk of love from sluggard minds. It wounds the very brows of they thou claimest in love by placing nettled crowns upon them, thinking thou art now bound by blood and thorn. Undo this mean disservice, for a man who makes crude chains of love misshapes himself as well his opposite and ill-formed halves have none the fill to make a finished whole. Love won't be wrought by hammer and poor eyesight, nor is it bought, begged, borrowed, nor achieved as one could win at game. Real love is not possession, not possessing, nor the act of being one possessed by someone else. No, love is not an object like a book or painting, handled and transfigured as a fable-minded artist would, who thinks that flesh and blood should be transformed to stone. What tragic disrespect upon thy lover to still their beating heart and call this love! A real love simply is. Alive. It comes. It goes, at times it lingers twixt two people who, equaled in each other's company, are people, eye to eye, respect between them, apple genesis to a brief time of peace and satisfaction. Nothing more. Those truly in love do not attempt to keep control of it, do not attempt to govern those whom they wish to love or gain love from. In faith, they trust that real love will remain, if in respect the each and other show not meretriciously invented love, but what each does deserve, respect most true. Kate, neither slave nor slaver of my heart, I'm gladdened by thy pride and self-possession. Indeed, thou knowest already my praise and awe of thee, each part of thee thy own. Come, men! My mind hath been as dull as yours to think to love one conquers or is conquered. But now I see our war things are for naught when what's been won is broken when it's caught. With Kate, I ask her nothing but to love and to be loved if peace is love's true charm. And I accept all consequence thereof, including banishment, if love does harm. As token deed to prove my love is so, if she but say the word, Faith, I will go. I bid thee stay. For that, I am contented. There is no better proof in words and deeds of true love's work than Peter's transformation. Thus, Kate and he, I now proclaim the winners. <laughs> I, I readily concede with happy pride. This wager's won by what Kate hath inspired. And glad I am my brothel shall abide in Kate's good hands 
when I am well retired. By troth, I am astonished by this change in Peter's will. Believe it, husband. Was Kate's pride that made it so. Mm, tis his will that's the anvil, and her clanging pride the hammer. Marry, tis true, and made for happy endings. With feast concluded, let's go now to dance, and follow what pursuits this night <laughs> may chance. <laughs> Why falter, Kate? Kiss me. <laughs> I am contented. <laughs> the Banging of the Shrew was written, directed, and produced by Joseph Stephen Leonardo and starred Bridget Garwood as Kate, Isaiah Music Ayala as Peter, Brianna McKay as Bianca, Mason Aiken as Luke, Perry Shields as Horace, Deba Rothhart as Madame Baptista, Melissa Marks as Helen Hecate, Michael Grancolas as Dr. Lawrence, Alan Merritt as Grayson, Glenda Suggs as Maria, and Maggie Gagliardi, Angela Irene Perkins, Mia Passarella, Claire Munns, and Keely Jimenez as Josephine, Nicole, Rachel, Carrie, and Petra, respectively. Matt Sosa as John, and was narrated by me, Sam Kelly. Our sound engineer was Lynn Earls at EMP Studios. Music for The Banging of the Shrew was written, arranged, recorded, and produced by Zach Tabori. Editing and sound design by Joseph Leonardo. With Foley by JRS Productions. Maggie Gagliardi was our production assistant. And cover art was created by Haley Breen. And additional artwork and illustrations created by Mia Passarella. Matthew Michetich and Joseph Stephen Leonardo, executive producers. Special thanks to Bridget Garwood, Daniel Kluger, Scott Forbes, Matt Temple, Todd A.O., Jeff Peters, David Jeffries, Scott Haller, Tim Hooten, Sarah Lanka, Leland Jackness, Alex Rapport, Julia Stein, and Oliver Baker. And a very special thanks to Hannah Poston. Like what you hear? Then rate and review us on your favorite podcast service. And tell a friend about us, too. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Banging of the Shrew. And visit our website at bangingoftheshrew.com. Thank you for listening. The Banging of the Shrew. This has been a Tango Silent Films production. Do not quicken yet. Yes, mistress. Coming soon to a podcast near you. (laughs) Romeo and Juliet, barely legal. Two porn companies, both alike in infamy. Their two best stars crossing paths to find forbidden love. Romeo and Juliet barely legal. And a pansexual gender fluid extravaganza of mistaken identity and unimagined ecstasy. In as you lick it. If Shakespearean porno podcasts be the food of love, lay off.